Hello and welcome to Around the Hoop, the Westwood Basketball Show. I'm your host, Mike Gay, and again, we will be joined by Coach Clifford and St. Martin. Welcome. Good to see Thank you, you, Mike. So since we last met, um, a couple of games uh, with similar records. Uh, Steve, why don't you walk us through the last couple? Sure. We uh, Friday, we had uh, Medway, uh, went to Medway on their senior night. Medway is uh, actually tonight their game against Bellingham is for the, the, the small championship. Whoever wins that game walks out. So they really needed that win. And um, we did not play well at all on uh, all facets of the game. We didn't rebound well. We didn't pass well. We didn't defend well. Nothing went well for us. And uh, we lost that one. And then um, we came back Tuesday night and uh, beat Norwood at, at our gym. So that was great. Um, and even though we lost, Hopkinton lost as well. So we ended up clinching to win the league, which is great for us too. So all in all, some good things to take out of it. You just hope that uh, the losing isn't something that you have to learn from. You shouldn't have to lose to learn anything. But we'll see how it goes. So after a tough game um, mm -hmm. on the road, uh, coming back again, the home and home uh, against Norwood, were you able to correct some of the mistakes that you made on Friday night? Not really, uh, not completely. Um, and uh, so it wasn't a complete correction and that, that can happen at times. Um, so it's, but we did it in practice and that's the tough part. And we, we spoke about this many times, especially last year, like translating practice to games is, can be difficult sometimes because mentally we look at things differently. And that's the challenge is to take everything as it actually is. And you prepare and you, it, it, like we talk about with free throws, every free throw you shoot should be the same. It should have the same type of feel and intensity and commitment to being the best free throw it can be. And that's a hard thing to do. But that's what greatness is all about. Greatness is about doing those little things very well consistently. And if you're inconsistent, then it's hard to be great. You know, and, and one of the things that we talk about in, 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 our, in, our, in our locker room a lot is winning is an attitude before it's an action. And you never want to be confused with the record winning with the attitude of winning. Um, and the kids are great. I mean, they're trying as hard as they can to, to learn these things. Um, so when we do get to that point, when we do learn that, then it becomes even better for us because how hard they work and how committed they are to working hard, we just need to be committed to discipline on everything that we do correctly. Can you give an update on the injury front? You've battled injury throughout the course of the season. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. coming into the, uh, the Riley Classic <coughs> and then the, uh, the uh, MIA playoffs healthy? So far, so good. We just we have one person out who's sick. Brad Nelson's been sick for a while. He'd get a nice case of the flu. Uh, he's been battling some things all year long with different sicknesses and stuff. So we're hoping he gets better and we get him back for, for the tournament, um, both either the Riley, but definitely the state tournament. So, but other than that, just bumps and bruises that everybody has, but not the significant injuries where we were missing people for an extended period of time that we went through this year. So, so that's been good. That's good to hear. Uh, Coach Clifford, um, Friday, again, uh, you were, uh, I believe, home against uh, Medway yeah. and then uh, home and home on Norwood. So fill us in on how you did. Yeah, so Friday night against Medway, it sounded like our game started <coughs> the same. We were um, just not great in the first half. Uh, couldn't get anything going offensively. Um, we weren't shooting well. Uh, Medway runs a 1-3-1 one, one half court zone, which I don't think was really killing us. We just like really couldn't get in any kind of flow. Um, so we were down at halftime. We'd only scored eight points in the first half. Um, and it reminded me a little bit of the Friday before that we played four just okay quarters against Hopkinton. Um, but the girls were able to rally in the second half. Third quarter we played okay. In the fourth quarter we really you know, turned on the Jets. We scored 27 points just in that quarter alone um, after 16 up to that point. So that was good to see. Um, but just to see the fight was great. We ended up losing by two and it was a tough kind of a little bit of a heartbreaker, but obviously we dug ourselves a huge hole. Um, but again, the Friday before that, we couldn't do that against Hopkinton. We couldn't find that run. So to be able to do that was, was a great you know, sign of growth from them. Um, and we were able to carry that into, we got snowed out Tuesday, but Wednesday. Um, we hosted Norwood, who has since you know, clinched the TVL large title, um, beat us the first time around, and we were able to beat them by 10 on Wednesday night. Um, and the girls were great. We developed a, a game plan we thought would work um, just to kind of catch Norwood off guard and keep them on their toes all night. Um, and the girls were awesome. It took a lot of communication on the court. Uh, we rode one lineup for a really long time. We had some kids playing some big minutes, but the whole team was into it. The floor of the bench for you know, 32 full minutes. And credit to Norwood, we were up uh, 13 going into the fourth. 
Uh, we had scored kind of right at the buzzer, which was great um, with a little momentum. But they're a young, feisty team. They didn't give up. They cut it to five at one point. Um, but we were able to close it out, which is great. I, I didn't see kind of some signs of panic we'd seen in some close games earlier in the year. That, was, that wasn't there. We were just kind of you know, composed and, and, and confident all the way through, which was, which was awesome to see. Um, Sarah Roycroft Jr. had a huge breakout performance for us. She had a career high, 13 points. Um, she was six for six from the free throw line, uh, which I think this year and either of us would take. Mm. I think we're the best free throw, free throw shooting teams in the league, but um, mm. she was huge for us. She had a great night. Um, and, you know, Fiona McGowan, we made a halftime adjustment to just do something a little different offensively to try to get some more points, and she dominated the third quarter, which was huge for us. Um, and Hannah Bean was Hannah Bean, just steady as she goes, handling all their pressure, and um, she led us with 14 points uh, and was great. So, I mean, everybody played great. It was a great night. We, we were coming off four straight losses, so um, we really needed it, and the girls went out and got it, and it was a lot of fun. And that's it, avenging an earlier loss, a really tough loss at Nord where your team yep. played well, uh, but just uh, ran out of time. Um, so what adjustments did you make? You mentioned that you went in with a, a little bit of a different game plan. Yeah, I mean, the first thing was, you know, we didn't have Elizabeth Gill for that game when we had her the first time. So I, I think I think a lot of people probably counted us out of that game, having lost with her and then to come back with without her. Um, we knew that defensively, I think we could have done a little bit better than we did the first time around. Um, so we tried to just switch different looks and throw different things at them. Uh, we played mostly man the first time around. We mixed in um, definitely some more zone this time. But it's a credit to the kids for the communication. We were switching things up and just we were kind of on the ball and kind of had that confidence the whole night, which was really great to see. That's great. And uh, so on the injury update, you mentioned Elizabeth was still still missing uh, some time. Yeah, she's still out where she's getting closer. She's definitely doing a lot better, which obviously, first and foremost, we want her to be in good health. Um, and she's mm. definitely getting close to that, which is great to see. She's at least able to be with us. She's been on the bench for the last two games. Um, I, I, I know what it's like to sit on the bench and miss a game, and it's torture. Can't mm. imagine what it's like to not even be able to be in the gym with your team. So um, it's been really great to have her back, and hopefully she'll be back you know, dressed soon. Oh, there you go. So let's talk about the uh, the road ahead. Mm -hmm. So tonight um, we've got Holliston um, and a, a really important matchup for both of you from a seeding perspective. Both have qualified for the state tournament, which is the first goal. Uh, you've been able to clinch the uh, TVL large, mm -hmm. which is again one of the boys goals. So final game of the regular season followed by the Riley Classic. You want to start? <coughs> sure. Um, every we, we kind of got handed a pretty good little gift by uh, Hingham lost two games in a row and Situate lost last night to Hanover. So we control our own destiny as far as it, do we get a top four seed. If we can win these games that allows us to get a top four seed and that allows then for you to host two playoff games, which is huge. Um, so we control our own destiny with that and tonight's the first step with Holliston. Um, Holliston, record-wise, they didn't qualify for the tournament this year, but, I mean, they're going to go out and play the best they can because why not? I mean, they, that's what they usually would do, and plus that now they're trying to become the spoilers. Um, and uh, they, they have some pretty talented offensive players, uh, and they all are interchangeable, which makes it a little difficult, too, because you have guards and forwards that can play a multitude of spots. So. Um, it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting for us to see what we can do. Then going into the Riley Classic, we're going against two tough Division I teams. One is Shrewsbury, and they have a 6'7", 240-pound Division I baseball player who's a junior. He's already going to BC in a full commit as a junior, and he would be a scholarship uh, basketball player as well. I mean, he's all bit a 6'7", seeing every, him on film. And, and he has pieces around him that are uh, pretty interesting too is not as tall but some really thick and strong players and then they have some shooters so they do a really good job of utilizing what they have and on the other side is Braintree and, and Severian. Severian is already, already qualified for the tournament. Braintree is in the process of accruing wings to do so. Uh, both teams are very very talented um, and are going to pose a challenge to us in all facets with size, with height, with speed, with athleticism that uh, you may not see a lot in the TVL, but you'll see in the state tournament. So these are great preparations for us to prepare to be in the state tournament. So that's our, our road ahead as far as games go. Coach Clifford? Yeah, we go to Holliston tonight. Um, their record doesn't show what kind of season they're having. Um, they're coming off two good wins. 
They just beat, again, I'll go transitive property again, even though I don't really mm -hmm. believe in it. Um, they're coming off a big win over Ashland. Ashland just beat Norwood. I mean, they've, they've been up and down this season, but um, they've had some really big nights, and I think this is their season finale. They didn't make the tournament, so um, they'll be hungry to end on a win for sure. So we need to make sure that we're ready to go, um, that we're not you know, still thinking about the Norwood win. That was really fun, and we definitely celebrated that, but you just need to turn the page and, and move on to the next one. So hopefully we're ready to do that. Um, in our Riley Classic, same thing. It's three competitive Division One teams. Um, Needham and Wellesley from the Bay State Conference, which is one of the most respected around. They're both having great seasons, um, you know, both well coached, both, you know, good strength of schedule and good record. Um, the fourth team is King Phillip, who didn't make the tournament last year. Um, they have a fairly new coach over there who actually played for Westwood, um, and she's doing a great job. They're having a great year. They're in the tournament. They just knocked off um, both Foxboro and Mansfield recently, who are both always contenders in the Hockamock League. So um, it's going to be a really competitive tournament. Um, it'll be you know tough to win games, but that's obviously the goal. And um, right. either way, we know we'll be battle tested for for the state tournament. That's why Correct. we schedule you know the Division One teams and, and make it really competitive. So it should be a good good two days of basketball. We're looking forward to it. That's great. And the, and for those watching, the schedule of the Riley Classic. Um, so Sunday the first uh, yes. first round games. Uh, you want to go over the times? Yeah. So Sunday the um, girls semifinal matchups are at one and three. So we play Needham at three with Wellesley and King Phillip beforehand, um, and then the boys follow that. So it'll be Braintree's Varian at five, no Westwood Shrewsbury at seven. seven um, on Monday it'll go boys consolation game, girls consolation game, and then boys championship, girls, girls championship. championship. So hopefully we'll be playing back to back, but back to back nice. in the late games. <laughs> be very nice. That's uh, that's for sure. That's the goal. So we have a little bit of a different uh, a different uh, <coughs> mix today. Instead yeah. of doing uh, the players of the week. And you could probably argue that uh, all the players that are here could could qualify for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a, a sibling episode, right? Uh, so uh, one of you can walk us through who's uh, who's going to join us. So on the boys' side, you have James McGowan, Jimmy Bean, and both Joey and Michael Noon. So the the siblings on the, for the girls' side would be yeah. Fiona McGowan and Hannah Bean are here, and it's something we've you know talked about all right. season. Um, right. We had Fiona and James last year, but I think that was our only one in the program. Correct. Um, with Hannah coming back this year, it set up the Bean matchups. We've been talking about the four of them for a while, and then as soon as Michael Noon got brought up, we knew we had to do it with all six of them. So right. highly yeah. anticipated siblings episode. Absolutely. Been a lot of talk around town. People have been really <laughs> putting the, the, the switchboard has been lighting up here at Western <laughs> Media Center. Uh, and, and again, the Noons, it's kind of a, a, a late addition. We, we talked about this when we just had the two, two pairs. Right. right. Uh, so it's awesome to see uh, the two brothers playing on the same team. Um, so, any, any want to walk anybody through uh, their respective games, what they've meant to the to the program? Well, I mean, first off, I mean Joey Noon is just a consummate person to be around as far as uh, perseverance and commitment. I mean, he's just he really transformed his game, his his body physically, and committed to being really well. Uh, he's got one of the best shots in the program, and just developed the confidence in the off season that we talked about once that happened, good things would happen for him. So uh, for him, I'm just happy the season he's had and I'm just anticipating how great it's gonna be for him going forward for the rest of this run that we're on. And then James McGowan, um, again, a sophomore who just is, is a gym rat, an old school gym rat, kid really loves the game and is willing to put a lot of time in. Uh, and as he keeps developing not only his skill set but physically, more and more great things will be ahead of in his path too so uh, and then Michael Noon um, was a call up that we brought up uh, for for we had so many injuries we called up guys and decided to keep him because his competitiveness in practice and it's an exciting way to see a freshman be able to compete that way and, and have that hunger he keeps putting the work in in the off season too good things could be for him and last but not least is Jimmy Bean. I mean, Jimmy was a, a Severian student and then finally realized he should be a Westwood student, which was great for us. Saw the light. Him back. Yeah. He saw the light, and it was great for us. I mean, he uh, came back last year, played JV. We called him up for the tournament, made varsity straight out of the gate this year, and uh, is very versatile, so he can play a multitude of positions. He can play big and post people up, but he can draw people out and go by them. He can defend multiple positions. So. Uh, it's been really, really great to have him too. So we're excited. And I'll tell you, I mean, talk about I increasing your uh, commute. He went from about 30 seconds to a whole three minutes. <laughs> right, that's, right, right. You know, 10 exit. <laughs> so, um, Coach Jack Clifford. Yeah. So Fiona and Hannah are here. Um, both of them have been great for us. They've been great leaders. They're, you know, two of our 
um, definitely vocal people at practice and in games and just trying to keep people motivated. Um, Fiona is definitely a, a versatility option for us that's huge. There's been multiple times that I've turned to her during a practice and said, like, you know I need you to know how to do everything on b both ends of the floor from the positions like one through four. And she's like, yep, got it, and just like, you know, takes it and does whatever is asked. Um, we didn't play a lot of man, but she was, you know, ready to be matched up on one of the best post players in the league in our Norwood game um, and just is ready to do whatever, whatever the team needs. Uh, and again, had a huge third quarter for us. Um, and, you know, we took advantage of a matchup we thought we could get um, from them, and she was able to do that. So I think both her and Hannah, we've, we've asked them to increase their roles without Elizabeth. You know, we have 17 points a game sitting on our bench, and, mm -hmm. you know, we need to increase, increase our scoring output. Um, and they've both been great. Hannah just does a little bit of everything for us. She's like having another assistant coach on the floor, which is always helps um, and has been has been awesome. Played great against Norwood and just as a her compete level is is through the roof. Um, and it's just it's really fun to watch her out there. So we're extremely excited to meet the, uh, the siblings and uh, the best of luck finishing out the season strong. Thank you. Uh, and then the Riley Classic, it should be phenomenal. So uh, for those of you at home, please come out and support uh, all of the Westwood teams and the other games. There's some, like you said, some great talent. Right. Um, there's some connections to the uh, Zverian uh, team with some of the boys that played throughout the uh, Westwood program. So uh, again, best of luck in the short term. We'll be back next week to, uh, to talk about uh, seedings and uh, all the prep that you have for the uh, state tournament. Sounds great. So, Good luck, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to, I believe, the brother and sister combos first. So we'll be right back. Joining us next in the studio are two of the pairs of brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome. So Hi. first we have the, uh, the McGowans. Uh, we have Fiona and James. Uh, and then we have the Beans, Hannah and Jimmy. So we'll start with the uh, McGowans. And uh, since you're sitting close to me, you can, uh, we'll start with you, Fiona. Um, so you're a senior, uh, one of the senior captains on the team. Mm -hmm. um, in a basketball family where your brother James uh, has been playing a couple years below you uh, all the way through. Uh, so what does it mean to have such success with your sibling on the other team? Um, it's cool. Um, I think when he was younger, it was kind of, like I didn't really go to his games more as much and like it just wasn't like as serious, I guess. And like, I think getting to high school, it's just been like, I don't know, better to see a competitive environment and just we understand and like a lot of the teams we play are the same now, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of talk about um, your driving skills and uh, uh, carpooling and, and taking James to and from different events and mm -hmm. uh, so any, any comment on that or? Um. <laughs> Teaching James how to park and you know some of the, some of the, some of the like? Um, he does, I don't really teach him. Um, he's a sponge, though. He's, he's taking it all in. Yeah. I'll take it all in. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we joked that there was a camera out in the parking lot. And, uh, yeah, picking, that's more picking. my driving, I guess. Yeah, there you go. No, that's cool. So, uh, James, on your end, uh, sophomore, you've been a, uh, you know, started for two years now, um, playing at a high level. Uh, how many times would you go to your sister's games and watch her in the younger years? And are you, are you finding uh, more enjoyment out of that now at the high school level? Uh, Definitely when I was younger, I went to a lot of like the Metro West games because like both my parents went, so I had to go too. <laughs> so I watched a lot of back then and then now it's cool to like, it's more competitive now and like more organized and like the players are better. So it's more fun to watch now. Uh, any comment on the progression of your sister's game uh, from the Metro West days now to the high school level? Uh, she's definitely gotten a lot better, better skill wise and like mentality wise. Very cool. Uh, on the Bean side, we've got a, a couple of uh, Westwood um, from, from the start, went to private high schools, um, Zverian and Nobles, mm -hmm. uh, and then decided you, you needed to come back to Westwood. So we were, we're very happy to have both of you back. Um, so we'll start with you, Hannah. Um, talk about uh, the experience um, of playing at Nobles, coming back to Westwood, and then the fact that your brother came back from Zverian. Did that have any impact on your decision to come back? Yeah. Um I wouldn't say it had an impact on me coming back, but I was definitely very excited coming back to play with him. Um, kind of like the McGowans as well. We would always go to each other's Metro West games. We had a very supportive family, so we always enjoyed watching sports, of course, and watching each other play. Um, thinking back to um, when he was talking, I remember we all went to a Dana Barrows camp. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Fiona wasn't oh, there. Th were you there? Probably not. Lacrosse, I don't, I don't think Fiona was there. <laughs> but us too, we went to a Dana Barrows camp. So um, like also growing up as siblings, we went to a bunch of camps together, and we, also, we would just learn from each other. And we had fun throughout it. And of course, Jimmy got taller. So I used to be taller than him, but now 
He's much taller, so when we play against each other, it's a little disadvantage, but I've learned a lot from him as well to get a quick release and stuff like that. So Very cool. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't ask you guys about the one -on, your one-on-one -on -one battles. Uh, and would you, uh, Fiona, would you take, take your brother, brother to the post and dominate yeah, him? Yeah, shoot over him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. So very, very cool, uh, Hannah, um, on some of the background. Um, so now are you, do, you, do you find yourself um, going to the games that you can? Obviously, a lot of the times you're playing at the same time, which makes it difficult. Yeah, no, um, before the season even started, Jimmy had told me that like all our games are at the same times, but different places, so we weren't able to go to many. But this past game, the Noah doubleheaders, the doubleheaders we love. So yes, I do like staying back in, watching my brother play. and. I am surprised as well because I haven't been able to go to many of the high school games and watch him play, but I've definitely seen a lot of growth from him um, using his height, but he's very, I think he's learned a lot from St. Martin and his players as well. He's very much more active now on defense and offense, and I've seen, I've seen that he's gained a lot more confidence as well, so I like that. You still have some one-on-one -on -one battles? Yes, every once in a while. We'll go to Lifetime and yeah. see, see if we can find a hoop to do that. But Do you have a, a running record? Um, are you able to take, uh, take your brother pretty regularly? Not a running record. I'd say sometimes we compete with foul shots and how many we can there you go. Out, but I win most of the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jimmy, on, uh, on your end, uh, a couple years now back uh, in the Western program, um, you had some injuries that you battled throughout the course of the season. Uh, when you're out there on the court, you make a huge impact, uh, whether that's a, a, as a starter or, or coming off the bench. Um, you know, what have you, uh, what have you done to kind of prepare and, and, and be ready for that action? Um, I think definitely since like baseball ended in the summer, it's uh, like really, really got like the whole team starting to come in together in the fall. And like we had like weightlifting and like conditioning and like just a lot of like work to pre uh, prepare for the season. And I think just like how hard we work and practice like every day, have, really have the same mentality, which really like boosted our chemistry throughout the year. And it's just like really been a really like great squad to be with all year. So. Are you six feet? Um, I think I'm six two now. You're six two, okay. My nana likes to measure me a lot. So. You know, I was gonna uh, I was gonna say. I mean, you 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 play a lot larger than your than your size. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's uh, you know your 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 spring your your wingspan, but uh, you're definitely a wider and and uh, taller player. And the Westwood has really needed that at, yeah. at times this year. Uh, you've been able to play the five, the four, and um, you know add add a lot of uh, a lot of bulk. So it's been great watching you guys play. Any other uh, you know, fun, fun facts, uh, sibling facts? Um, you mentioned the, the, the clinics and going to some different camps together. Uh, that's cool. How about other sports? Um, is that, does that rivalry, that uh, sibling rivalry, kind of extend to pretty much anything you guys play? Yeah, I actually have a funny story. We were thinking of this earlier. Um, just it shows how competitive we've always been growing up. And um, this was at Hanlon Elementary School. We were playing dodgeball during recess. And um, the ball, we were on the same team, but the ball was coming towards me and I was able to catch it, or I was going to go catch it, but he wanted to push me aside and <laughs> have me him catch it. And it was actually on my birthday, so he caught it and turned and said to me, happy birthday. So even <laughs> with us being on the same team, we've always been super competitive. So that's really Very cool. So now, fire. you know, I mean, it's, did he catch it as in you were saved or did it bounce or what, what happened? No, he just pushed me aside, so he was the one able to catch got it. it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know, he, he could have been, you know, making sure that he was protecting you because yeah. you had bounced it. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll take that angle, <laughs> but uh, competitive uh, as well. How about how about your on your end? I know you both play lacrosse, and um, are there any other rivalries other than basketball? Um, there used to be. He actually doesn't play lacrosse anymore, but <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So well, well, you know, you mean lacrosse family. So. Yeah. yeah. I would have beat him in that though. Yeah. So. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. How about now, since you've given it up? I, I would still win. Wow, confidence. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So uh, as we talk, talk to the coaches, um, you've got some big games coming up. Uh, Holliston tonight to wrap up the TVL schedule, and then you've got the Riley Classic, uh, which is a real tuner for, for both teams. Um, you know, stay healthy, play hard, and uh, we're expecting big things out of the, out of the siblings uh, mm -hmm. coming down the pipe here. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's about it. Is this your first time here? Yes, it is. Okay. Welcome, and hope, hope to see you many times back. Joining us next are Joey and Michael Noon, a senior and a freshman, respectively. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this was a pleasant surprise. We talked about the uh, sibling episode earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, uh, Michael, you were playing on the JV team. Um, some injuries uh, gave you the opportunity to, to come up to the varsity team, and you 
have taken every advantage of that. Uh, had a, a big game as well as some, you know, many uh, uh, strong minutes. So I'm very happy to have, have you both back. So uh, Joey, we'll start with you, senior captain. Um, seems like it was yesterday that we were playing in uh, the uh, uh, Western Basketball Association, uh, the, the uh, Metro West League. Um, your game has come a long way. Uh, talk about what I did poorly as a coach and then what St. Martin has done from that point on to change things around. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just the difference in the, the intensity from even Metro eighth grade to even freshman year, sophomore year, and just each year it's gotten more and more intense and I've had to kind of transform my game as well as, um, like Coach said earlier, my confidence has really been a big part of my game. I've developed that over time and I feel like um, the way I work in the off season, how I've uh, prepared myself is how I've developed my game a lot. Not only have you developed your game, you've also uh, developed the skills to be a captain, uh, which is great to see. Um, you know, you kind of leading out there both on the court and off the court. Um, talk about that growth uh, as, a, as a player, as a, as a young man, and, and how that's impacted you. Yeah, so I've learned from um, players before me, whether it was um, Givino, Nick Kennedy, all those guys, Fitzgibbon. Um, and it's the biggest thing, I think, is the accountability part, like holding teammates accountable for everything. Um, it's tough. It's tough sometimes because I mean, you don't want to yell at your teammate in practice, but it's gonna it's gonna get get, get us better in the long run. So it's tough sometimes, but I mean, um, yeah, I've learned a lot from previous players, and it's been I've transformed my game as well as my uh, character too. So. Yeah. So speaking of yelling at players and not wanting to in practice, mm -hmm. um, we'll transition to your brother. So now your brother's mm -hmm. playing varsity. You're yeah. you're the senior captain. Mm -hmm. Um, what, uh, how does that transcend uh, both the practice and then when you go home? Are, are you on him a little bit more than you would be other players? Uh, maybe a little bit, but it's, it's really not much has changed other than the fact that we're on the same team, so yeah, that's fun. No, that's cool. And so, uh, Michael, welcome. Um, very happy to have you here the first time and, and uh, around the hoop. Um, so as uh, your brother just said, going from Metro West, um, the speed, the intensity, um, you know, the prep that you have to put in to, to be ready, a huge jump to come to the high school level. Um, you started off in JV and, and you know making JV as a freshman was a big deal but then very quickly you're on the varsity squad. Uh, not only you are on var varsity, you're one of three guards in one game and so you're playing a lot of that game. Uh, how has that transition been and have you realized how, uh, how, how well you're doing at such a young age? Yeah, the, the obvious transition is that the pace and the speed of the game is a lot faster. But another thing is that the expectations are a lot higher than, than any team I've been on before. And um, it's just, it's been a uh, difficult jump, but I feel like I've been able to do a pretty good job adjusting. Talk about offense versus defense, um, and, and you as a player, and, and how you have to adjust to um, you know, performing in the offensive side of the ball as well as defensive. Yeah, I think um, on offense, uh, I think my skills are there at varsity level. Now on defense, I'm still trying to get better at that. And um, it's just a lot harder than anything I've done before to guard varsity players. It's just last year I was guarding eighth graders. So I feel like um, my offensive skills are better. I still need to work on them, but defense has been the hardest part. And how, how do you do that? Um, is that just uh, giving everything you have in practice and you know, listening to the coaching, listening to your, uh, to your older brother and the other captains? Yeah, it's a lot uh, following the older players and just working hard in practice. Um, just get better every chance you can. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the, game, the one game that you, you know, seemed to be you know, the certainly most productive game that you had when you, you, know, you got a lot of minutes? I saw your brother uh, the, the following day at In Town, and um, you know, he was saying that you had a, a pretty big game offensively. Um, you know, did you know going into that game that it was going to be uh, that you're going to have to play a lot? Yeah, I knew a lot of guys were out and someone had to step up, so um, I thought, why not me? And it was pretty fun to be out there for my first game and make some shots. So that first first time, ball swings to you, no hesitation, boom, right up. Mm -hmm. I think I, I missed my first few shots. But I kept shooting, and eventually they started dropping. Like any good shooter, you just forget about those and move on to the next. Mm -hmm. how, about, how about defensively in that game? Was, was that uh, where well, you had some of the offensive successes? Uh, were there some challenges defensively, and, and did you just try to grind it out? Yeah, it, it was tough, but um, I made a few mistakes, but you got to move on. And I just uh, kept working hard the whole game, do my best. There you go. So uh, now we'll talk, talk, 
touch on the uh, sibling aspect of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Joey, did you ever think that you'd be playing on the same uh, varsity team with your younger brother? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm used to him playing against like really younger kids, so it was kind of weird at first to be playing with him. But I've gotten used to it. It's it's not bad. For your parents, I'm sure it's uh, it's amazing to yeah. to have that mm -hmm. have that opportunity. Uh, how about yourself? So, uh, did you ever imagine playing with uh, with Joey? Yeah, I knew it was possible. I knew he would be a senior, I'd be a freshman. And in the past, I never really thought it would happen until this year. I realized that I had a good chance of getting called up, and then it happened, so it's, it's been fun. Uh, I'll ask you, who's the better player right now? Uh, I think right now it's Joey, but I, I have a lot of time to get better. There we Thanks. go. Well, that's a very uh, diplomatic answer. Uh, Joey, same question to you. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's me right now. <laughs> we'll see if he gets to my level at some point. But. No, that's awesome. Well, you both uh, bring unique uh, skill sets to the, to the team, uh, the leadership of, of somebody who's really, um, you know, kind of transformed their game into, uh, you know, pr a productive offensive and defensive player uh, with that confidence that, uh, quite frankly, I, you know, couldn't tap as a, uh, you know, you were very nice, by the way, about not pointing out all of my weaknesses as a coach. but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's just great to see you, the growth that you've had, and Michael, you know, watching a bunch of your games and, and the uh, Metro level, you know, you always had that uh, that confidence and skill. So I know it's going to translate here. Um, any uh, any fun uh, fun stories you want to share about uh, this experience um, and what it's been like to have your brother on the on the team? Maybe when he first got called up, I don't think he said a word until like last week, probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's anything else. You know, and I'll just say, you know, both of you haven't been known to, to necessarily yeah. uh, carry conversations to no. start to finish. You're, you're <laughs> men of few words, but when you say something, they really count. Yeah. So any, anything you want to add? Yeah, it was just uh, weird at first being on the same team as him because I'm used to watching his games uh, against much older kids. And it's uh, a lot different being on the same team, being in the same locker room. A lot different as in awesome or a lot different as in just different yeah. and weird? Uh, it, it was kind of both. It was, yeah. it was fun and it was just uh, new to me. Uh, that's great. Well, I'm sure this is uh, going to provide moments that you'll, you'll always look back to and cherish. Mm -hmm. So uh, best of luck tonight uh, against Thank Holliston, uh, wrapping up the TVL, yep. uh, the uh, Riley Classic, um, great D1 talent that you're going to face, um, onward and upward, and then uh, the MIA tournament. Yep. So uh, again, thanks much for yeah, uh, joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Around the Hoop, the Westwood Basketball Show. Um, if you haven't been down to Westwood Media Center at 15 Perwall Street, please do so. Uh, it's a great town resource. Um, again, I want to thank Coach Clifford and St. Martin for joining us in studio as they have all season long. A uh, special shout out to the siblings. Uh, we had the, uh, the Beans, we had the McGowans, and we had the Noons. Uh, and we look for great successes out of all of those pairs as well as the rest of the boys and girls teams. Um, special thanks to Maggie McGinnis uh, for producing the show. Uh, to Melinda Garfield and Connor Lynch uh, for uh, doing phenomenal things here at Westwood Media Center. Uh, until next time, I'm Mike Gay, and we will see you at Bader Gymnasium to support our, our Wolverines. Take care.